Hi everyone, how's it going today? So, I want to welcome you to the Darker Hour channel. Um, what, we're, uh, what I'm trying to show you guys today is I'm going to be doing a AIO installation for my wife's computer. She's this H100i Pro right here is what I want to install inside this computer right here, right in front of us. Um, the HI100i Pro is the old AIO that was inside my old computer. It is still fully functioning. I haven't found any issues with the cooling with it or anything. The only reason why I replaced my water cooler for an EK uh, AIO water cooler, the 280 variant of it, um, was because I kind of have a, a computer about this size, but it's the NZXT H510, and the cooling is subpar for for what I'm trying to do but besides that so today we're gonna break into this computer get this water cooler inside there and then just make sure it can run everything else is in there motherboard uh, PSU hard drives and RAM everything else you could think of just need a cooler on the CPU to run it so today we have a Intel build with an ITX board, ASRock ITX Z270N Gaming is the motherboard in there. I have an i7 7800X inside the computer right now, and we just need to get this AIO cooler in there. We have a TX750 non modular power supply inside this thing. And so, let's take off this side panel. Um, let's see how that goes that over there for a minute and so inside here you have the small ITX board right there power supply all the cabling since it's non-modular you know simple case fans um, and there's fans that do come with this H100i right here okay I have the little X NZXT box right here if you're wondering what that is that is just uh, little tiny parts like IO shields right here and so on so um, let me get you guys a closer view into this and let's get to work okay everyone so we have the computer on the side so like I was saying we have the Corsair TX750 it is a old 750 I want to say silver or bronze power supply but I don't see anything on here that indicates whether it is or not uh, so we're not gonna worry about it right now so right now we're going to be putting the AI on here. And so let's take a look. So we have an X299E ITX slash AC. Now I did try to get a custom water block for this uh, motherboard itself because it does have a pretty good IO set up with uh, internet and all the USB 3.0s on the back, which will be the only USB 3.0s because with this being an old NZXT case, we're gonna have issues since USB 2.0 is all it's gonna have on it. And so, next, let's take a look at this RAM. So, right now it is a T Skill Ripjaw DDR4 uh, Sodim RAM. So, let's pull one out and take a look. And so, if we take a look right here, if we can get it to focus. Right there. So F4 266C18Q 32GRs. So it is a 266 DDR4 sodium. 8 gigabyte times 4. So 8, 16, 32 gigabytes in this system. Okay, so timings are 18, 18, 18, 43 at 1.20 volts. Um, pretty low voltage. Runs cool, made for a laptop. But I mean, with having an ITX. Uh, board that's how we're gonna run and like I said we have a core i7 7800x which is in a socket of LGA 2066 um, which is a bigger socket than the one in my PC which is the LGA uh, 1511 I think or 1151 whatever um, so this also has uh, four 3.0 USBs, one 3.1 USB right there, and 
uh, a USB-C 7.1 audio and dual gigabit uh, LAN connectors. Um, so, I mean, it has a lot of I.O. connections. I like it. It does have a dual BIOS on it. A and B right here, you can switch between them. It's a clear CMOS button on the back. Um, and only one PCIe uh, slot. So, only good for one card if you need it. Network card, but I'm going to put a video card in it. So, um, what else about this motherboard? It has SATA, it has two M.2 Super uh, slots on it. Um, I think one is right here, and then there's one in the very back of the board, like right where the CPU is. And we'll take a look when I take the back off, because I might need to. So that's a rundown of this board. So let me pull out the AIO and we'll get started. All right, so I'm, while I'm looking in here, I'm seeing one big issue, and you guys probably figured this out before I did. But when you're connecting a AIO to a place, you need a place for both your fans and uh, both your AIO water uh, block or your radiator. So, yeah, radiator. And so a fan, yeah, fits this line. You know, as you can see, there's a fan right here. And so problem I'm having inside my head right now is that um, I can't connect both not with where the RAM is you know there's no fitment because it would be technically the thickness of two uh, 120 fans because this is about the same thickness as that 120 fan so I have two choices here I do have room down here to mount the motherboard lower but that would make it where I wouldn't be able to uh, have access to the IO sh shield or the IO ports and I don't even know what that would look like <laughs> what kind of fitment that would give me or I could attach the radiator on the outside or the fans on the outside radiator on the inside that sounds like a better idea. That's where I'm going with. So, let me grab my screwdriver. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to take off this top fan right here. So, uh, so I got the right screw head on already. So let me do that real quick. So I was looking at the fitment for this and it looks like I'm gonna have a couple issues. So. The spacing right down here, right here, for these screw holes are different from the spacing on here. So like these screw holes are uh, really close together compared to like these screw holes right there. Um, let me see if I can show you guys. So if you look at where these screws are, boom, 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 and boom. That's what that looks like. And so, from this back end, the screws are, you know, there's 140 millimeter to 120 millimeter. And so the 220s are really far apart. They should be more like that. And so I'm gonna have to figure out a way to maybe screw the AIO into the 140 millimeter holes up here, maybe over here, but at the end of the fan is going to be like down here in the grating. Um, so that will be interesting. So we'll give we'll give that a try. And so let's uh let's get this guy in here. I was thinking about posting it to the bottom ones, but I don't want it very close to the motherboard. And this is a very tight fit. And so, as you can see, right there, right up there at the top right where those colored, where that plug is, it's touching that port right here. And so, I don't want that. So, uh, 
I'm gonna have to fandangle it, but I think I can get it done still. Fans are gonna be mounted on top. So let's uh, switch over here so I can get you guys a better view, so. Okay, so what you guys are seeing right here is the very top of the PC, okay? Of the PC case, sorry. So I'm just gonna show you what placement the fans are gonna look like. Um, it's gonna be a, a rough in, but um, so what I want to do is try to find where that uh, fine line is for those two top holes that I was showing you guys. Um, and make sure I got the right screws so they don't go too deep. Because if the screws go too deep, I don't want to puncture the radiator or have any risk of doing that. Good. So I got the right screws. And so the fan here and a fan here. Okay, so I got it in. Um, six out of eight screws went in. It is on straight. All right, so I'm gonna flip this guy back up and we're gonna attach the CPU. So um, let's take you guys for a ride. So what I did was I added these screws, which technically is supposed to go to this hole uh, but they don't fit, so I used the two 140 millimeter holes and same on this side. And they all went in to a pretty good corresponding hole, except those two. And I can't really see down on the camera. They don't line up, they go straight into a metal plate, barely. So if I wanted to, I could draw them out, but it, it feels like it's on there pretty solid. We're gonna get this thing up on its side and Let's start getting this on. That's the last part we need. And then we can give it a test. But I don't think it looks that bad. <laughs> but we're gonna have to figure out where the cords go. So let's take my camera stand out of here. And yes, I am working on the floor. Grab this guy up. Just hold on to this guy. Grab this guy up, pull him up, and put him there. Set this guy gently in the computer. So that's what it looks like. It's not centered. The fans are blown out, so they'll pull air from inside the case and then cool off whatever hot water there is inside the AL. I mean, it's not practical, but. The fan colors, I mean the casings around the fan match. I'm okay with that. Alright, so we're on our side. Um, and we're ready. I'm ready to install my trusty old AIO. So, bring that down a little bit. And so, with my screws, I'm going to be using these guys. I mean, they're, they have a small gimbal like maybe an inch but the biggest thing with these guys um, is like this fat end and then this skinny end and so the fat end is going to go into the socket right here because I don't need that back plate and that, this little section in the center right here will determine the spacing between the uh, metal plate right there and or copper plate metal plate and uh, the connection to it and the CPU so there are different lengths of ones uh, we got those ones which are a little bit longer but those are the double they have double small so I need the fat and small that's pretty much what I'm trying to get across and so with that so let's get them on Put them on by hand. We should be able to attach this pretty quickly. So, boom. Got to get that one in. They're so small. <laughs> and really small. I should have done this with it laying down, but I've still I've installed like 
at least like 10 of these. So I'm pretty confident with my skill level and my knowledge of everything that it shouldn't be an issue at all. So this flat spot on the nut or whatever will have this metal plate right here resting on it. And kind of wish there was springs in the setup because then if there were like a tiny spring here, um, right there, tiny spring right there, then I could just push it on and use that spring to tension against the back pressure. And so that would make things a little better and I bet it would be a little better for cooling because then it wouldn't be a hard mount, you know, just straight onto the CPU. But at least, you know, with the heat spreader, we don't have the issue of breaking the die or nothing like that. And so, yeah, that looks good. Simple enough. The This bracket and everything makes things a lot easier. So, let me get my uh, static camera, camera set up so I can get the rest of this done. For this next part, we're going to be using... Da -da -da -da. Hydronaut High Performance Thermal Grease. You know, it's a very good uh, big bottle Hydronaut. It's really good for water cooling setups and AIO setups. You know, you've probably seen it on the internet if you spend a lot of time on YouTube. It is my favorite kind of thermal grease. <laughs> so, get it on there. Um, personally, I like to spread it across. People just put a little dot, dab in the middle, but I mean, we've seen it where that doesn't work out for people always, you know? There's sometimes, you know, <laughs> it doesn't spread across the whole die. I know the die is technically just in the center of, like, the heat spreader, but it's better safe than sorry. These heads don't fit on this. I Oh, okay, I see really tight fit like what the grease so I've never done it with these heads before but it's worth a try so let's get it spread on so one Get them out, it's extruded, and let's give it a good wiping effect over the hair. CP has been cleaned already, so don't have to worry. Jeez, there's a lot of pressure. I don't know if that's the right one for what I'm doing, but we're about to find out. Oh, yeah. You don't need a lot of thermal grease either. Just a thin layer to cover up any inconsistencies in your mount due to either the eye, the die not being flat or the heat spreader not being flat. Which I don't see why your die wouldn't be flat. But <laughs> so a lot of the times, that you, as I've seen, Intel could have uh, heat spreaders that aren't perfectly flat. And that becomes an issue for itself. Um, I would like to do um, like where I sand down the heat spreader. What is that called? And uh, see if it does give any performance boost on my computer. Um, I probably won't do it for this one, but I wouldn't mind doing it for my 9900K because that's the one where I have seen it, you know, have issues. With spreading. No, I might have put too much. Just gotta spread it now. Oops. It's okay. And I would not let none of this go to waste. I like this spreader. This is nice. So. Now we got thermal paste on there. I think it looks good. You know? I am happy. That's not my focal point, but 
I took a look at it and there's not really any missing. This nice th thin layer on the thermal paste. So I took this SATA off. Let's keep that off. That probably looked weird. But <laughs> looks like it jumped off. Alright, so now let's get this thing attached. So I've had this plastic on there this whole time. And so we now need to decide do I want it like this? Boom, logo straight, everything good. Yeah, this is exactly how I want it. Where are my thumb screws? Here we go. Gotta get them ready. It's a little, I think they call them M4 thumb screws or something like that. But I'm excited. Get this thing on here. Um, boom, there's the heat spreader for, or the copper plate. So, let's get this lined up. I only got one chance at this. Just kidding, it's not just one chance, but I like to think of it like that. Okay, boom. Got it on. Hold it on with pressure. Get your thumb screws on. And when you're doing it, always put your screws on in a star pattern. And with that star pattern, you're uh, spreading out the chances of having even pressure across the whole thing. I think there's some more other science involved with why to do that, but for best practices, Doing a star pattern is gonna just alleviate any problems you might run into. And I can't say that your thermal paste job will be perfect, anything like that, but it's always good. Best practices are for best results. So, bottom right. Tighten that on a little bit. Top left on a little bit. Bottom left. I put that on. How much play do I have? Good. Got quite a bit of play. Bottom left. And don't over torque these, don't over tighten them, but tighten them pretty good. You'll definitely know inside your HW monitor on your computer whether your screws are tight enough or not. Because if you're having issues with cooling um, and you open the side of your case and you just put a little pressure in the center of your AIO pump thing right here and you end up getting way better cooling, you're probably not tight enough. This is what I've learned. And there's also a problem with having it too tight uh, where thermals can be pretty bad too. So just tighten it enough where you think, oh yeah, that's, that's putting some good pressure on there. But not like, oh man, I'm about to rip the socket off this mother motherboard, you know? So, do it to your best practice, okay? It will always come out with the best result. All right, now that we got now we got the AIO on, so very happy about it. Um, yeah, that's all I need to do. I'm gonna connect the cords, but I'm gonna have to stop the video here. So I just wanted to remind you guys that I am new to YouTube. This is my very first video for YouTube. This is more of an intro introductory video for me to get used to talking with the camera and working around the camera and kind of getting used to how photography works. So um, so if you guys like the video, please stay tuned for number two where I can see if this actually works and maybe what I could do better. So I hope you guys enjoyed and yeah, I just hope you guys liked it. Have a great night, bye.